there are seven sections here. As you can see, we're talking about equality amongst the groups. Remember, civil liberties are based on the Bill of Rights, and civil rights are based on the 14th Amendment beyond the idea of equal protection, due process, are the two things we're looking at. So again, you can see again the, the, the learning targets for each one. There's number one. We're going to talk about overall the three standards for, for review. So when we look at what it all started with, it was the Rosa Parks arrest for the civil rights movement in 1955. Let me have those front seats. So you guys could see that's the moment it kind of all started. So what is discrimination, guys? Um, when we look at this topic of discrimination, how the Declaration of Independence said we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Well, how has all men created equal changed since the founding of our country? Just a question you have to ask yourself. Um, in terms of racial, uh, gender, sexuality, age, disability, um, are we more equal today than we were at the founding of the country? These are things you have to ask yourself. Um, what today could be compared to what Rosa Parks did in 1955? You know, is there a lightning rod event today that's kind of brought this again back into our, our mindset, into our vision? You can call out maybe Colin Kaepernick sitting or kneeling during the national anthem. It's caused a stir. Donald Trump, our president, has been against this adamantly, saying that the people who do not stand should be kneeled and fired from the NFL. And now a lot of sports, the NBA has Black Lives Matter on the court. The, the NFL has put not Black Lives Matter, but other uh, uh, statements and phrases on the field to show that they're behind it. So again, is he the moment? I don't know. I'm just brainstorming with you. You can see tweets from Donald Trump about to fire or suspend them. Again, just so you know, a bureaucrat like Trump or an elected official cannot tell a private a company to fire people. That's illegal. But again, Donald Trump is Donald Trump, and he's doing things that most politicians won't do. Again, you can see Jerry Jones here in Dallas, not in Dallas, but here in Texas, kneeling with his players. And this was probably 2017, 2018-ish. Uh, again, other uh, other teams, there's the New England Patriots, but you don't, I don't see Tom Brady there, I don't think. Again, and then, look, wouldn't it be great if kneelers would meet in the White House to discuss why they are protesting? I don't agree with their protest, but I understand that they have that right. Let's try to fix this together. Do you think that's something Trump would say? Obviously not, because he's always attacking. He's always doing that. I wrote that on like Twitter or whatever you can, the fake tweets that you can do. That's what I would want a president to say in a situation. Why didn't he call people in? Why didn't he have meetings about it? Find out what they're doing and work together on it. Instead, he attacked. Again, which doesn't cause, it's like if your parents attack you or friends attack you, you go defensive and then it doesn't solve anything. So it's just something to think about in terms of that. Uh, again, we're not going to watch the commercial because of uh, copyright infringements. But remember, Civil Liberties, Chapter 4, about the Bill of Rights and about individuals. Civil rights is what we're doing now. 14th Amendment, what the government must do to ensure equal protection, and it has to do with the groups. And that's what I want to make sure you remember. So what are some of the concepts of equality that we're talking about? What does it mean? Well, it doesn't mean we're all the same. If you saw the new Willy Wonka movie, old ones way better by the way that's just my opinion again these guys weren't as good but it was just computer animated in a sense these these um oompa loompas it doesn't mean we're all identical what does equality actually mean and you can see there's the old one again however you want to view that uh it doesn't mean we have equal rewards it doesn't mean as a teacher i'm making the same amount of money as someone else there is a salary schedule for teachers for that it means equality of opportunity inalienable rights that we cannot take away from you and everything is under our law constitution that's what equality means 
So I know you've heard the, the term socialism, which I know conservatives really hate the word. I mean, everyone should hate communism because of what happened with socialism in Russia during the Cold War. But we have so many socialist institutions in our country today. You're sitting in one. You're going to school in a public school. That's socialism. It's free education, guys. I know we're getting taxpayer money for it. But and then I have to treat you guys equally. That's the whole idea of what that is. Uh, there's so many more uh, examples of it, but I just wanted to give you a quick one just based on where you are. And remember, the 14th Amendment, which is a Civil War Amendment, in 1868 was passed that gave us equal protection of the laws. You can see there, that's the only place the word equal shows up in the Constitution. Okay, interesting. Only time. Amendment, 14th. Okay? You can see the number of immigrants that are coming into our country in terms of it's rising and rising, and now you know why. The conservatives and Trump have tried to stop this and curtail it because going into the future, look at the projection. And these are people just coming into our country legally to some extent. It doesn't say illegal here. It's just immigrants. Again, you can see there Trump has stated um, that he's going to get rid of part of the 14th Amendment about naturalization. Can't do that, guys. We know what amendment is. I just want to make sure you know that. So let me ask you this question. Is discrimination legal? I should have the Jeopardy music playing in the background. Is it legal to discriminate? Yes, it is. This is interesting. How? Well, I can discriminate based on, not I, the government can discriminate based on drinking age. What is the drinking age in America? What is it in Texas? Do you know these? Let's go more. What about the draft? We can discriminate against women working on the front lines, fighting on the front lines. Actually, it's changed since, but we used to discriminate that way. How about tobacco? 18 year older to get tobacco, even though anybody can really procure it, but you can't really buy it. You can get it from someone who buys it for you, obviously. Again, uh, some states have changed to 21 years old. Interesting. Driving age. States determine its driving age. So that's discrimination. It's not fair, but some states, what is it, 14 and a half, South Dakota? 17 in, in some parts. I don't know what that state is there offhand. Texas here, it's 16, 16 and a half. What about voting? 18 to vote. Most people at 18 don't really vote. It's still the lowest turnout of all of them. And then school. We force you to go to school. We discriminate against you. You don't have all your rights while you're sitting in a classroom. Really interesting. But choices still matter. You can still go to college. And that can separate this idea of who's equal. You can go to a better college or, or, or a two-year college to get your AA degree. You can be that guy who goes to party in a banana costume. I thought it was a hot dog at first. You can be that guy. He still can be successful. But again, choices matter in our lives. It's about equal opportunity. And I, I had to find this photo that tried to find everything in terms of ethnicity, a picture that, that encompassed everyone. So if we, if, we, if we look at this image, yes, I'm trying to annoy you. Um, we can see there's, a white, there's white kids, African-American kids. There's Asian-American kids. There's Hispanic-American kids. There's an Indian-American kid, if you want to say Indian-American. But um, why don't we say white American? It's interesting how we, we, we pose that. But again, that's for another discussion. So what's missing? Obviously, there's a lot missing. You can say Native Americans, Pacific Islander Americans, Arab Americans. So you can see, again, however you want to look at that. So remember, dif differences in society are inevitable. We all look different, but we have to treat people equally. So the key is for the Supreme Court and the court system to limit the most egregious forms of discrimination. These are egregious, separate but equal. Whites served only. This is segregation. No Spanish or Mexican or two different drinking fountains or even putting away the Japanese in World War II in internment camps. These were not concentration camps like World War II. Okay, now remember we said differences always exist, especially through the groups. So it's how the group is treated overall. And that's what we're looking at. So some lawful discri discriminations, constitutional drinking age and smoking tobacco age. Unlawful, or I'm sorry, women in combat, which is now changed. That's why it's a question mark. Unlawful is equal access to opportunity. You cannot have, if you have a disabled person who cannot walk, you don't have stair, uh, an elevator or a ramp to get up. That's not equal opportunity. That's unlawful. You will be sued as a company, as a, as a school. It, it happened here in the Eanes District a few years back at Eanes Elementary. They had a student who needed access. They only had stairs. Boom lawsuit they had to change it and retrofit their campus most campuses today are retrofitted to to be equal opportunity to anybody and that's what we're talking about so congress's role is to obviously ban the worst so you could see mlk with lbj they passed the civil rights act of 1964 again where they gave a lot of 
African Americans the right to vote. Okay. Then affirmative action, which is something you're going to learn about a little later as well, it favors those who tend to suffer from discrimination, whether it's based on being in a college or a job or public work. And you can see employment or education. And there is where it kind of started with JFK. Government contractors have to take affirmative action to ensure that they're, that applicants are employed without regard to race, creed, color, or national origin. And then the Civil Rights Act also kind of banned that same concept under LBJ. So you can see JFK's ideas went right back with his vice president when he took over and he continued that. Again, employment and public accommodations, but it did not stop segregation in private places yet. Okay. It aimed to end discrimination in all firms with 25 or more employees. Again, it was an aim. But here it is. This is the classification the Supreme Court has to do. The Supreme Court has to judge if Congress has not gone far enough. And if it hasn't, it has to intervene. Is equal protection taking, equal protection taking place between and within groups? That is what the court system is really based on. So here it is. This is kind of what the, the objective was and the learning target for today was to learn about the, the classification for equal protection. So there's a chart. You can get it online if I, if I think I have it under the notes on my website. And all I'm going to do is walk you through it. So the first one, again, this is you'll see some discrimination being allowed and what things are not allowed. This is called rational basis, the standard of review. Does the classification have a rational relationship to a legitimate government goal? And again, we're talking about age, wealth, and some other things as well such as all the ones I've already spoken to. We can discriminate against drinking, smoking, driving, taxing age, okay? There's really, the only discrimination you can't do is force somebody to retire at 60. If you do, you have to give them the five years they're supposed to get. So again, it'd be like a package to retire early. It'd be interesting. Okay, I'm 50, they have to give me 15 years, please, and a million dollar signing bonus or exit bonus. Okay, the second level is called quasi-suspect. It involves gender and immigration status. This is called intermediate scrutiny. And again, it's a little tougher to meet. Uh, and again, you can see that applying the test, what the Supreme Court has to ask. I'm not going to read through everything, but I just want you to get the idea that the military draft, this is about gender. Uh, we only draft men at this point. Now, women aren't really part of it because we really don't have a, a, a we don't have a draft anymore or selective service. We have a volunteer army who really want to be there. And we learned our lesson in Vietnam. OK not providing social security to undocumented immigrants, this is permissible. But what's not permissible is to pick the man over the woman like in the Reed v. Reed, Reed, Reed case. Their son had died, he left an estate, they automatically in Idaho gave the money to the man and the Supreme Court reversed that decision from the lower courts and gave it to the woman. We gotta be treat things equally here. They should have split it obviously, but again, that's for the courts to decide. Last one is suspect class. This is the, the one that, that you, it's called strict scrutiny. And in this case, uh, it's very, very, very difficult to meet. So there's the applying the test one, what's the least restrictive. And as you can see, there is no examples of permissible discrimination with race, religion, ethnicity, and national origin. Okay. Um, but it would the example from our history would be Jim Crow and segregation are separate, but equal. That is what the court has to answer. So it's interesting here, and, I, and I ha, I wanna, I'm not going to talk bad about my prior employer, but LBJ in the Austin, IS, I, Austin Independent School District has a school there, and it's called LBJ Early College High School. Some great kids there are well, but it's usually black and Hispanic that, that attend that. But above their same school, they have a different school called LASA. LASA is one of the top 10 schools in the country. Okay, It's more of an elective school in a sense very high achievers, uh, liberal arts and Sa science academy, I think it's called. But they share a school, grounds together. So when I taught there for two years, I noticed that all the blacks and Hispanics are on the first level. And then the level above them, it was whites and Asians. Now, all the kids down the, below would could go to the school upstairs, but it was too hard. They ended up coming back down. But it looks like segregation. I know Austin ISD is going to move the schools, but again, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's just something that looks like it's segregation in the 21st century, which is interesting. And again, I enjoyed my time at LBJ. I'm not speaking bad about it. It's just something you notice and bring up in, in your lessons as you discuss. This is 5.2 now. So um, let's talk about the African-American civil rights as a group. 46.3 million 
most likely the numbers are 2010 and we're 2020. We're still in the midst of waiting for the census to end. 14 plus per percent of the U.S. population. The biggest issues of discrimination were slavery and their voting rights. So you could see where they live, mainly the southeast of the United States. And again, just to give you a quick history, uh, if you don't remember, 1808, we stopped, we stopped the slave trade. 1865, we outlawed slavery. 1868, and the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. Uh, free men vote, if you want to remember it in that way. So the voting was the uh, 15th Amendment. And then Reconstruction. And during Reconstruction, we had this idea where people still didn't want anybody who was a freed slave to be equal. So they created this idea of Jim Crow laws, which was separate but equal facilities. Again, you're seeing the, the rise of the KKK during this time. And again, separate but equal facilities. Plessy versus Ferguson was the famous case with that, where he couldn't stay in the, in the car because I think he was one eighth black, something like something close to that number. Uh, still today, or at least 1954, 60, 70 years ago, we had segregation laws. Look at the South. It looks like the Civil War, again, in terms of segregation required versus um, segregation prohibited. And again, the free states in the West or the states that joined later, again, no legislation because they don't have that. They're free and there wasn't any issues with that at that point. Um, equal education is a big one. So we talked about equal opportunity. So at higher education's Heman Sweat versus Painter was the idea that he wanted to go to UT Law School. Uh, they said, no, you're going to go to this other one, which is now Texas State today. And that was separate but equal facilities. And again, he sued uh, and eventually went to the Supreme Court that it wasn't separate but equal facilities. So that was the first time in education it happened. But we all know the biggest case of all of them is Brown v. Board because obviously UT Law School versus every single public school student in America, total difference. And again, I can't imagine being, I can't imagine living during that time. Racism was abundant by then. Today it's more hidden, but now it's starting to come outward more and more. And we realize that there's still hatred in our country towards people of color. Wonder when we're going to get past that, which is interesting. Uh, voting rights. Again, African Americans lacked the voting rights. So look at what they did to the 15th Amendment. Remember, free men vote 13, 14, 15. So literacy test, they would give you a test as you walked up. Grandfather clause, did your father vote? If he didn't vote, then you didn't get to vote for grandfather. Uh, poll taxes, they would tax you at the polls before you voted and you're poor, you couldn't afford it. And then eventually only having white people allowed to be in the primary, which is the precur precursor to the actual general election. You vote for people uh, for, for like uh, the, how, uh, the house where Republicans run against Republicans or Democrats against Democrats and you vote for them, they're only white people. So in reality, they're not a reflection of you if, you, if you're of color. Uh, the 24th Amendment uh, got rid of the poll tax. Again, obscure one, but again, I'm glad we finally did that in 1964. And then the Voting Rights Act of 1965. You can see there's a Civil Rights Act of 64, Voting Rights Act of 65. So much legislation in the 60s because that was really the height of the civil rights movement in our country. Again, today, there's voter ID requirements. States like Texas has strict photo. I go in, I can go to a bunch of different places, precincts, uh, I just voted, and all you got to do is show your ID. You actually, they scan it. It finds it for you. Here's who you are. You sign. Here's your ballot. Go vote. In states like California, I don't even have to. I just go on and say I'm Jeff Antoon. Boom, you can vote. I mean, a lot of places you could actually go and register that day and still vote. So why do the states have such requirements? Because they want to make sure it's truly that person to, 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 to make sure we minimize fraud or double voting or whatever the, the case is. But a lot of people look at these as those that are discriminating or even stopping minorities from voting because most of those minorities are going to vote uh, liberal or Democrat. So you could see Republican conservatives. Is this a ploy or is it not? It's up to you to decide. I'm just showing you or giving you the facts of what you need to look at. So let's just take one little quick judicial review question. The Supreme Court can overturn, has the power to overturn all of the following except which one? Which one do you think it is? So if you said Bill of Rights, you are correct because the only way you get rid of the Bill of Rights or anything in there is to amend it. To repeal it, not going to happen. We already know that. So here's what you would do. Like if you have that form to fill out about it, we might do this in class. I don't know what we're going to do. But this is something you're going to see. What is the minority right? So there's the African-American groups. There's their pathway to, to equality. There's some of the major cases on the right. And what we have to focus on is what's here, the minority right. Equal education or equal access to education, 
prohibit discrimination just generically, and then continue to ensure voting rights. Okay. All right. All right. Chapter five uh, point three: the rights of other minority groups. Let's just look at them very quickly. Hispanic Americans are known as the largest minority group. They have about 16% of the population, probably more at this point, because this is probably 2010 numbers. Um, you could see most of them uh, where they live, south and southwest. Uh, you can see the Hernandez versus Texas about the jury and a, peer, a jury of your peers. And again, that's a major SCOTUS case for them. Uh, similar to African Americans, except for the slavery side of things, it's voting, but it's about legal immigration with Hispanic Americans. Uh, children can attend public schools. It's interesting to see that. Uh, and there's there's not a consensus on national policies. We know when Trump came in and we know that, that the, these cages had already been built. I don't want everyone to understand that. But Trump separated all these families that were coming over. And now there's about three or four hundred kids that have cannot be replaced, but they're or found their families. So they, they separated families, caged them. And then now we're having a tough time getting them back to their families. So they were already created these cages in quarter to house people who are coming over the border illegally. So illegal immigration is a big issue from the South, uh, but they can attend public schools here, which is interesting. That means that our taxpayer money are paying for illegal immigrants who are not paying taxes to get that education. Just a thought. Uh, there is immigration and the total population in America up to 2011-ish guys up here. So you're going to see it's still around 11 million number of immigrants in the United States illegally. So we're right around that. I don't know how you're getting the same almost number, but that's the number they gauge when they did that. Uh, illegal alien removals. You could see a Barack Obama uh, was higher than George W. Bush, which you wouldn't guess with a liberal president. But again, that's there. And then you could see the states with the most unauthorized immigrants. Nevada, it's always the Southwest mainly and Florida, you can see in joining it. But Nevada, California, Texas, and the top three. Um, and again, their minority right, we're focusing on what we're positively giving them, is the same kind of thing. It's equal access to education, prohibiting discrimination and voting rights. And you can see, again, their pathway and the outcome for some of their major cases. Asian Americans, they're the fastest growing minority group. You can see the percentages, only 6% of the population, but they are growing the fastest. And their issues in the past was, if you remember in the 1880s, uh, Chinese Exclusion Act, they were, you could not as an immigrant come to america to try to become an american or even come here we excluded them from coming because they were taking all the jobs uh or so to speak uh japanese americans again during world war ii they were put in internment camps again we did apologize bill clinton i think is the one that that sent the letter out apologizing for doing that because that's discrimination obviously we wanted to protect our homeland america from anybody who was japanese or or, or sided with the japanese because they attacked us on December 7th, 1941. And you can see where they reside a lot in the Northeast, West Coast, Northwest, Hawaii, and Alaska as well. Uh, there's that famous photo in 1869 when the two railroads met in America for the first time, a transcontinental railroad. Again, a big mode of transit in the late 1800s. And notice who built the railroad. Obviously, Chinese were a huge part of building it. And there's not one Chinese in this entire photo. You're seeing how they, I mean, that's not, that's discrimination because we're not giving them credit for building our railroad. There's the photo from the Japanese internment camps. I know guys that you might think that these internment camps are similar to Holocaust and or to the concentration camps from World War II and the Holocaust. No, these were just to house them, to control them. So they didn't have a chance to act out against us. And again, FDR put that executive order through and I think it was executive order 1066, something like that. I forgot it. Now, the, the the population growth, you can see it. Asian Americans are at 46, Hispanics at 43. That's from 2000 to 2010. Obviously, we have to wait for the next numbers, which will come out of the census. But what is NHPI and AIAN? Again, I wish I had the Jeopardy music for you. But again, what they are is you can see... Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander and American Indian and Alaskan Native. Pretty cool to see that. So their minority right for them is to, we don't want to deprive them of their rights in terms of property because we took their property after a week or they had to sell it really quickly. Uh, deprivation of the rights by interning them uh, and affirm affirmative action issues today, even to the sense that they're starting to be 
not as much in the group of affirmative action or help. So now they're kind of suing, uh, especially the Harvard case, where they're suing because they're not being let in as much as others and they have better scores. So there's a lot of stuff that's still kind of ongoing. I'm going to skip the video. Native Americans, uh, that's the next group. They're the oldest minority group at 6.3 million. Uh, a lot of the stuff has to do with us pushing them off their land, us Americans in the past taking their land and putting them on this land that's kind of worthless to some degree, but they're reservations. But here's the thing. We, in the Dawes Act of 1887, uh, we gave them more autonomy. Uh, the 1924, uh, we gave them citizenship. So they're Americans as well. But again, on their reservations, they do not have state tax and they are semi-autonomous to create their own rules. So there is kind of some forgiveness there. I know it's not going to ever make up for what we did, but you can see where they reside. Now, this is it's the census, but it doesn't have the year on this one. I'm thinking this is 2000 or 2010. But again, where the reservations would be outside of Alaska, obviously. And their big issue was basic civil rights. We took them off their land, moved them out. They weren't considered American, so we gave them that. Uh, economic development, allowing them to create their own uh, need, which they built a lot of the Indian casinos or Native American casinos uh, where they make a lot of money from us. And uh, to the extent of they have so many of them, they're making as much as the, our illegal casinos like in Las Vegas or in New Jersey, stuff along those lines. Uh, Middle Eastern Americans, the next group, this is the most feared minority because mainly of terrorism and, and the connection between uh, Muslims and terrorists. Now, I want to make sure you understand, obviously not all terrorists are Muslims and not all Muslims are terrorists. It's the ones really on 9-11 that really kind of set out this, oh my God, right? So the bias related attacks since 9-11, we've racially profiled them. We've taken away habeas corpus. We have no evidence, but we're putting them in to a holding area to make sure they're not a terrorist. That's what the illegal detentions are. Uh, and then obviously racial profiling for them. This is the percent that's Arab in 2000. Arab is not necessarily all Middle Easterns, but it's that peninsula, obviously. And again, you can see how a lot of people think. This is in 2014, Pew Research. Does Islam encourage followers to violence? And in this case, you could see it was Republicans, Democrats, and Independents, and Republicans, over 60% believe that Islam is connected to violence. And you could see of the world, 24% of the world is Muslim, 35%. 45% is Christian, actually more because you have Orthodox as well. So again, you're seeing that happen. Moss in America in 2015, California, Texas, and New York, the most populous states have the most. Um, but you can see how it could instill that fear. Now, with Mi Middle Eastern Americans, it's really the racial profiling that was going on, the bias attacks that were happening, the legal detentions that were set up. These are things that we have to stop from happening. Okay. So we're going to leave off there and we're going to come up with uh, the rights of women on the next one. We'll see you next time, guys.